guys, it's Brad from Architect here. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create a large swarm of locusts inside of Blender 3D utilizing the SpiderFi add-on and Boyd's particle simulation. This technique is super simple and can be applied in a lot of different ways to get different styles of Boyd simulations fairly quickly. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. First, as usual, I will just delete everything in our scene here. And uh, now I will first add a camera to our scene, which we will add a uh, image background to, to be the point of view for our render. And I'll just uh, open up a side window here and we can go to view and viewpoint camera. And this is just a nice way that I like to work inside of Blender where you can see the camera view on one panel and then the uh, larger view on the left panel here. And uh, I'll just line up our camera here to the center of our scene, something like this. And now that we've added our camera, I want to add a background photo that I want to add our locust swarm to. So I'll just go to the camera tab here and go to background images and check the checkbox. And then I'll just go to add image and I'll go to open. And I've just taken a screenshot of an image of a desert that I will load here. And this will be the image that we will add our locust swarm to in the background. So I'll go ahead and bring this down here. And now that we've added our image to the scene, let's add our locust swarm. So I'll go to the SpiderFi tab here on the right side, and we will select the locust checkbox and name this uh, locust system that we're going to add. I'll call it uh, locust swarm. And I'll go ahead and select the add goal checkbox as well. Um, I think you can apply this technique that we're using here without a goal as well, but it is nice to have the bugs kind of go generally towards something. So I'll go ahead and just keep this selected. And uh, finally, I'll just uh, select our 3D cursor in the center of our scene here and click on add bug system. And uh, now as you can see here, if we zoom in, and we play through our system. We have a very basic uh, locust void particle system being emitted here. And uh, as you can see here, if I move the goal, the locust will generally move toward our goal object here. And this is how you can kind of control that general behavior of the system. But I'll get into some more details later. All right, so this is kind of a nice look in the foreground of our camera here, but we want to add the locust in the distance of our photograph here. So what we'll do is we'll select both our goal empty and our void particle system for the locust. And I'll just press G and drag it out here in the distance. And I'll go ahead and close our SpiderFi tab. And I will select our bug system here and scale it up. Maybe scale it up on the X axis to kind of fill up the horizon here. Maybe rotate it a little bit on the X axis as well. So we have a little bit more uh, area covered. And we'll go with this for now. And then we'll select our empty here. And I'll just place our empty maybe closer to our camera. So now generally if we play through our system, the locust will move toward our empty here. And uh, this is kind of a cool look. You can definitely utilize the technique here to create some locusts flying by the camera. But as I mentioned, we want to just create a swarm of locusts in the distance. So what we're going to do is actually add a vortex field to change the behavior of the locust and make the movement a little bit more erratic. But before we add that force field, let's uh, select our locust particle system here and adjust a few of these settings. So I'll go to the particle tab here and we'll keep the number of locusts at 200 for now. We'll definitely increase this later though and I'll scroll down here to our physics panel and here is where we can change the general movement of our locusts. I might change the max airspeed of our locust field to something like uh, we'll try 16 and then I want to scroll down here to render and I want to increase the scale randomness to 1 which is going to add a lot more size variation in the locusts and make the shot a little bit more realistic and this should be pretty good for now now let's add our vortex force field. So I'll press Shift A, add a force field, and we'll create a vortex force field. Then I will just uh, drag our vortex force field over to our locust particle emitter here, and I'll scale it up a little bit, and I will rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees. And now as you can see here, as the locusts are trying to fly toward our empty here, they're going to be disrupted by this vortex force field. Let's go to our physics properties tab while our force field is selected and adjust a few of the settings. We'll keep the strength at one, but I'm going to change the noise amount for a little bit of variation. So I'll maybe make this 1.4 and I might scale up the vortex field as well. And then I might also move our camera back a little bit since our locusts appear to be pretty big. And then I might also change the focal length of our camera in the camera settings tab to maybe 35 just because our locusts are still looking pretty big in our frame. And then to compensate for this uh, focal length, I will select our locust particle emitter and just scale it up a bit. 
All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now let's just do a quick test bake to see what we're getting so far. So I will select our uh, Locust particle system and go to the particle panel and I'll scroll here to cache. And cache is where you can save your simulation data for the movement of your Locust so you don't have to play through your system every time. So uh, to bake out the movement of our Locust system with the current settings in our scene, we'll just press bake. And now as you can see here, if we scroll through our scene, we can see that our locusts are being caught up in our vortex field and creating a nice swarm here. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I am noticing that they are kind of congregating toward the main vortex field here. So what I might do is actually select our vortex force field and press shift D, duplicate it, and put another one over here. And then I'll do one more over here. And you can, you know, change the size and scale of them a little bit to give everything a little bit of variation maybe move them around a bit as well. We'll try something like this. And now we will go back to our Locust particle system and go to our particle system tab. We'll delete the bake. And this time I want to try to bake the final simulation. And the Locusts are still looking a little bit big here. So I might scroll down here to our render settings here and just change the scale to maybe 0.6, make them a little bit smaller. And now I will go up here to the emission number and we'll change this number to maybe 45,000. And this is going to noticeably change the uh, speed of your computer depending on the computer you're using. I'm not using an exceptionally powerful machine right now. I'm just on my MacBook laptop. So it shouldn't be too crazy for some of you guys that have really good computers, but uh, just keep in mind that it will slow your computer down a little bit. And we'll just go back to our cache tab and press bake. And now Blender is going to go through all the frames in your timeline and bake the simulation data. And now, as you can see, we have a lot of locusts in our locust swarm here. And it's actually slowing my computer down quite a bit since I'm recording this screen capture as well. So I'll just go to the viewport display tab under the particle settings and just decrease the amount displayed to maybe uh, like 25%. And actually, I think that the 45,000 was a bit much. Probably about 10,000 would do it. So I might just rebake with 10,000 really quick here. So I'll just delete the bake. Do 10,000, maybe 15,000. Bake it again. And this is 25% of 15,000. I'll go back to the viewport tab and increase the amount shown to 100%. And this is looking pretty good. Depending on the density you want for your Locust Swarm, you can adjust these settings. You can also change the position of your vortex fields as well to get a little bit more of a random result. But this is the general idea. One other thing you can do to vary the result is uh, under the vortex field settings, you can go to uh, the noise amount and increase this. And that's just going to create a little bit more randomness in the way the locusts are flying. But uh, I think this is going to look pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and set up our scene to be rendered. And and output our locust swarm in an OpenEXR sequence so that we can composite it effectively. So first I'll go to our render properties tab here and under our render engine, I'm going to switch it to cycles. And all of the bugs included in the Spiderfy add-on are fully textured for both cycles and EV. They look great in both rendering engines. However, I just prefer cycles. I think it's much more photorealistic. So I'm going to switch it here. And uh, under the render samples, I'll just bring this down to maybe 30. And while I'm here under the advanced tab here, I'll go to the seed stopwatch and select it. And that's just for some noise variation in our render. I'm also going to uh, select motion blur so that our locusts have some built in motion blur to our renders. But I will change the shutter to uh, 0.3 and that's just so there's not quite as much motion blur. I'll also change my film to transparent so that we can render out our locust swarm with an alpha channel. And this is looking pretty good. Now let's go to our world settings here and add a sky background to light up our locusts. Um, as you can see here, if I go to wireframe mode, our uh, background image that we're going to add the locust swarm to is fairly soft light. I think it's around sunset when this photo was taken. So we're going to try to replicate that by just using a very basic HDRI that I've added. It's very important to match your CG elements to your live action footage or whatever you plan on adding it to. So depending on your shot, you may want to add a sun source or maybe use a different HDRI that matches the look of your footage more effectively. Um, but I'll just go to our color tab here and go to the environment texture and then open up an HDRI that I've saved under my download section. Lots of great HDRIs at hdrihaven.com uh, that are for free so feel free to check those out. And uh, yeah this should be pretty good. I might uh, decrease the strength of our HDRI a bit. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. I'll go to our output tab here, go to the file format under output, 
change it to OpenEXR. Make sure RGBA is selected for our alpha channel. And now let's go to our layer properties tab here. Under passes, I want to render out the denoising data as well to very easily denoise some of the shots. And uh, now that we've done this, I will just go to render and render image. And let's see what we get as a test render. All right, guys, so the render didn't take very long here. This is our render without our added background, and it's looking pretty cool here. I'll go ahead and close our render tab, and then I will go to the compositing tab and select use nodes. And as you guys probably know, I do most of my compositing inside of After Effects, but before I render out an animation of our Locust, I wanna make sure that it generally works with our background. So I'll just go to our compositing tab here, press Shift A, add an output viewer tab, and I'll bring our noisy image, which is a, kind of a semi-denoised image to our viewer. And I'll also bring that to our composite. And this noisy image is just a very basic denoised image of your render. It's just pretty much the same as your main image beauty pass here. It just has some very basic denoising on it. And uh, now I will press shift A, we'll add another input image, and we will choose our screenshot that we've used as our background. Then I'll press shift A again, go to color alpha over, and then I will overlay our locusts on top of our background here. And it's looking pretty cool here, already matching the environment fairly well. Of course, we can add some more locusts up here, depending on the look you're going for. But I think uh, as far as compositing goes, we can, you know, duplicate this and kind of replicate it all over our scene here. Or of course, you could add some more particle systems with locusts and uh, do it all in your 3D process. I'm going to go ahead and press Shift A one more time. I'm going to add a distort node, a scale. And I just want to make sure that our background image is the same as our render size here. And it is, so nothing to worry about there. And uh, yeah, that is how you can add some locust swarms inside of Blender. Just composite it all together in the compositor of your choice. Of course, to output your locust pass, of course, we have our main locust pass going to our composite here. We'll just go to the layout mode here. I'll go to output. And before I choose where we're going to output our animation, I'll just save our project. We'll just call it locust swarm desert. And now that we've saved our project, I'll choose an output for our animation create a new folder for it. We'll call it Desert Locust Swarm. Locust Swarm Beauty Pass. All right, accept. And now to render out your locust, make sure you have your desired render settings here at 100% and just go to render and render animation. And now Blender will go through your timeline and render out your locust swarm from start to finish. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.